We're continuing on our quest here to evaluate uh, complex numbers, and now we're going to evaluate the cosecant inverse of negative uh, square root of 2. And I could go ahead and actually use the, the cosecant, but I think I'm going to use a, uh, an identity which is very useful, especially if you're going to have to evaluate in the calculator, because the calculator doesn't even have cosecant inverse in it. So what you use is you use the fact that the cosecant inverse of x equals the sine inverse of 1 over x. That nice little identity. So I, I never deal with the cosecant or the secant or the cotangent inverses. I always uh, use an identity to change it to sine inverse, cos inverse, and tangent inverse. And so you kind of remember how this goes. And then I'm just going to say, OK, well, this equals the sine inverse of negative 1 over the square root of 2. Well, that looks kind of familiar if you've studied the trigonometry at all. And so we call this theta. We say this equals theta. Well, what do we know about theta? Well, uh, with the sine inverse, one thing we know that if, it's a, if, it was po if this were positive, it would be an angle in the first quadrant. But it's not. It's negative. And the sine is, so it's a negative angle in the fourth quadrant. So we know that theta is uh, greater than or equal to negative pi over 2 and less than or equal to 0. We know that by looking at the graph. If you study the graphs of these, uh, it's very apparent that all the negative angles uh, sine inverse of a negative uh, argument is going to give you a negative angle in the fourth quadrant. We also know that the sine inverse of, um, oh, excuse me, the sine of our theta uh, equals negative 1 over root 2. Well, if you ignore the negative and just look for the uh, reference angle of an angle that will give you uh, 1 over root 2, you know that's uh, pi over 4. And you know it's between negative pi over 2 and 0. So the answer is negative pi over 4. And uh, I'll move this back a little bit. Equals theta, which equals negative pi over 4. And last time, we drew a picture of the sine inverse graph. You should memorize the graphs of the sine inverse, cos inverse, and tan inverse so you can figure out what quadrant the, the negative arguments are going to be in. Let's go over here to the secant inverse of negative 2. And, uh, what I'm going to use, the identity I'm going to use for this, I'm going to use the fact that the secant inverse of x uh, equals the cosine inverse of a 1 over x. By the way, this is very easy to prove. And if you're taking trig, you should, you should look in your trig book for the proof. It's very simple. But here's the identity that you use. So I'm going to say, OK, well, this is cosine inverse of negative 1 half. Again, we have a um, negative argument there. So it's not going to be in the first quadrant. This is going to equal theta. And just for the heck of it, I'll, I'll sketch the um, 1, negative 1, pi over 2, pi, y, x. And we all know, should know, the cosine hits here and hits here and it goes like this, cosine inverse, excuse me. And so when I put a negative number in, like uh, negative 1 half, I go up here and I go over and I see that it's between, it's a positive angle between pi over 2 and pi. So I know that my theta is less than or equal to uh, pi over 2 and less than or equal to pi. It's trapped in here between pi over 2 and pi, the, um, the range of this where this thing is going to occur. So I know quite a bit about this. I know that um, a theta is between uh, pi over 2 and pi, and I know also know that the cosine of theta uh, equals a one, a negative one half. Well, if the cos, if you take the absolute value, if you look at one half, you know the common angle that uh, gives us that is pi over three. The cosine of pi over three is one half, so it's going to be a pi over three reference angle, but it's in the second quadrant. So I go over here and I say, well, this equals um, two pi over three. Just going over in my head just real quick here. Yeah, that's correct. So that's what the secant uh, inverse of negative 2 is 2 pi over 3. Now we'll go over here and we'll do the uh, cotangent inverse of uh, root 3 over 3. And I think it might be useful to say, well, if I rationalize the numerator, right, multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3, I'll get 3 over 3 times the square root of 3, or I'll get cotan 
inverse of 1 over root 3. And you'll see why I want to do that in a minute. Okay. Uh, because I'm going, to, I'm going to use this identity, the cotan inverse of x equals pi over 2 minus the tangent inverse of x. Okay. And that's how we get out of the cotan. And, and, it's, and if you have to do, if, you, if we had to do something that wasn't a common angle, then we we would we go to the calculator. But there's no cotan inverse, so you can use this to get your answer. Now I'm going to use that identity. I'll erase it right now, and I'm going to say, okay, well this is pi over two minus the tangent inverse, something I can handle pretty easily, one over root 3. And I think that's a little easier to recognize. First of all, I see that the argument is in the first quadrant. So this actually equals uh, pi over 2 minus theta, right? And I have to find theta. I know theta, though, belongs, uh, let's see where it's theta. Theta is uh, less than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi over. It's in there somewhere, right? So I know that's where theta is. I also know that the tangent of theta equals 1 over root 3, and that's a, a pretty simple common angle. I, I know exactly what angle that is. That would be, um, <clears throat> let's see, what is it? 30, de uh, 30 degrees or pi over 6, right? So I've got pi over 2 minus pi over 6, okay? And uh, pi over 2 uh, minus pi over 6 gives me, uh, well, let's see, that's, uh, that's, uh, 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Okay, I had to think for a second. But that's pi over 3. And that's my answer. So the cotan inverse of root 3 over 3 is pi over 3. Is that not 2 pi over 3? Mm -mm. I don't think so. 2 pi over, uh, so if I change this to 3 pi over 6, it's subtract pi over 6, I get it. Yeah, I'm right. No? Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> Sorry.